Good morning, my friends. This is Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to Morning Glory, our midweek Wednesday morning Bible study. I'm so glad that you are here today with me. And today, let's talk about the Alpine Heights. I tell you what, there's some prayers in the Bible that as you begin to pray them, you know you're in the high places. Praise God. We want to talk about this today. I want to ask you to meet me in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Holy Spirit inspired prayers that allow us to pray from the summit. Woo! Praise God. Father, we thank you that even if we're in the bottom, the bottom of the ocean in a submarine, yet we can still pray prayers from the summit because we are in the spirit seated, seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. Now, Father, we thank you. Let your anointing flow. Let the spirit of prayer continue to touch your people and drench them with the grace to pray. Now, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray, and around the world we say amen. Woo, praise God. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, let's drop down to verse 14. I want to share some uh, more of the prayers of Paul. This past Sunday, we looked at the primary prayer found in Ephesians chapter 1. But my friends, I want to encourage you to find the one that fits you best. Now, ideally, you would take the time to pray through each one, and if you pray through all five of them, you're looking at maybe maybe 15 to 20 minutes. They can be uh, stretched out longer, and they certainly can be prayed more often than just once in a day. You can pray them multiple times, and you can personalize them for yourself, and that is primarily what we're emphasizing in this teaching. You know, years back... Uh, Dr. Kenneth Hagin said that after he had prayed the prayers of Paul, particularly Ephesians chapter 1 prayer, after he had prayed that for about six months straight and uh, prayed it every day, multiple times a day, he said such light and illumination began to break forth concerning his understanding of God's Word that he went over and said to his wife, as he was in the church, and he left the church, went over and said to his wife, because so much revelation knowledge was flowing, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, what in the world have I been preaching for the last 15 years? He said, it's a wonder that the deacons didn't have to come tell me, come get in out of the rain. <laughs> now, he's not literally saying that he was standing out in the rain, the deacons had to say, come in. He's using that as a uh, metaphorical uh, illustration of like, hey, he didn't know very much compared to what began to open up to his understanding concerning the Word of God uh, based upon what was happening out of God answering that prayer. Now, Brother Hagin passed away in 2003, but let me say this. Over the years, and even recently, I've had those from other streams of the Christian faith, in, in other words, born again, but maybe they're in a different stream outside of what we would call mainline Pentecostal, word of faith type, you know, understanding. But I've had those from other streams ask me, what is your opinion on, uh, you know, Kenneth Hagin? Because they didn't know him and they don't, they don't have what I would call a revelation of that type of teaching, which is a overcoming, victorious. It's actually what Paul called the word of faith. Paul said, Paul the apostle, Paul said, we preach the word of faith. And so I've had a lot of people ask me, what do you think about Brother Hagin? And my simple reply is, I think he'll go down in church history as being one of the greatest teachers. Uh, of course, he was primarily a prophet. That's why there's such an anointing upon his teaching. But one of the greatest prophet teachers um, in, the, in the history of the body of Christ. And that's why, although he passed away in 2003, you can get his sermons or get his teachings and they're still just as relevant and vibrant today as they were if you were listening 40 years ago. And I do understand that there was what we would call a revival that some would call the word revival. How many of you remember those days that back in the 80s when it was really hitting, I mean, you would have people line up uh, in order to buy cassette tapes which are, you know, th those are all phased out, kind of like dinosaur things, but 
it was the big thing back then. You want to get the cassette tapes of the teaching. Not only would you be there to hear the teaching, but you would then buy the cassette tapes and just wear the tapes out, listening to them over and over and over again. It was a move of the Spirit that emphasized uh, grabbing faith and applying it to God's promises and to what God said and receiving what God rightfully gave to the body of Christ as our inheritance. And so it, it was wild. And, you know, to a big degree, I missed all of that because I didn't come into Pentecost until, um, uh, I think it was, it was either 1991 or 1992 when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I think it was 92. You ever meet, meet those people? They're really good with dates. They remember the day that this happened and the, and the hour that that happened and the very minute when that happened. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just the way God made me. But I, now I do remember the event. But as far as the year, I don't even know what year it was, either 91 or 92. So I missed in a big degree what was that global move of the Spirit where that teaching went all over the world. Now it had a lot of resistance, but in the, the end result is that God won. That, that teaching is all over the world now, even to the, the degree where even some of my Baptist friends, they would, they would never get like caught maybe in a Pentecostal type church, but yet they still can grasp basic word of faith principles, which is that if you want to receive from something from God, all of the blessings of God are appropriated through faith. You're going to have to put your faith on the line. It's not just going to happen. So you could say that the word of faith teaching has won out. It's all over the world and the largest churches, the largest ministries, primarily, if you look, they are word of faith based type ministries. Why? Because God has exalted his word above his own name. Again, I've said it many times, but if your word is no good, neither will your name be any good. So God puts great emphasis on his word. And so uh, that revelatory knowledge of the word and what it will do for you, not only to accomplish everything that you're supposed to do in life, but even greater, to accomplish not only what, but who you're supposed to be. So you can do all of these things, but it's also coming into the mature image of a child of God, coming into that mature stature of a man or woman in the Lord where Christ is for, uh, fully formed in you. And you cannot do that without the Word of God. And that's kind of what was so interesting about that strong Word movement, teaching movement back in the uh, late 70s and all through the 80s, even the early 90s, was that uh, you know, the churches that were flowing in that and the primary uh, outpouring of that uh, coming through Rama and Brother Hagin's ministry, you know, the praise and worship was good, but it was real simple, like, like four part, four, four beat, simple harmony type uh, music. Uh, it's not like the music was like really like well-crafted. It was just kind of like real simple praise songs, real simple worship songs. And the emphasis was not uh, per se, upon the music. It was all upon the Word. Is it just me, or have you also noticed that some of the denominations that are really having some struggles today, I won't, I won't say names, I won't talk about, uh, I could, but I, I won't say names, but have you noticed that some of these denominations that are really struggling today with uh, th their leadership, having all kinds of problems, those denominations are known for their music. They're not known for the, for the word preaching at all. Not, not even. Matter of fact, they're kind of like very, and they're still kind of like, they would be embarrassed to be, you know, associated with word of faith. They're, they're not into that. They're really into the music, but they have, they, they're having a lot of problems. Why? It's not built on the right foundation. Mm, do I like good praise and worship? Absolutely. But stop and think about it. Did Jesus have a praise and worship team going out in front of him? Did Peter and Paul, uh, well, of course, Paul wasn't there. How about this? Did Peter, James, and John play the banjo and Matthew and, uh, uh, and uh, some of the, you know, Simon, did they, uh, did they uh, like play drums and the ukulele and have this 
big praise and worship extravaganza. And then after that, then Jesus could come up and be like second fiddle. Uh, no, didn't have any of that actually. And yet Jesus operating in signs and wonders and miracles and filled with the spirit without measure would have meetings where every single person was healed. So I understand that having a wonderful environment uh, created through an atmosphere of praise and God uh, rides on the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. I understand that, but I also understand that the word is preeminent. Mm, mm, mm. Praise God. We're about to see the greatest move of the spirit that this world has ever seen. God's not done with America yet. And uh, until we go home to be with the Lord, it, he's not done. So when, when we're gone, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But as long as the church is here, the gates of hell will not prevail. Praise God. I haven't even gotten to my subject material yet, although I told you where it's at. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, I just know that we're called to be more than conquerors uh, in a world that is is an antichrist system, but yet the church will to continue to move and move forward. And we're going to see God shake this world one more time. And we're going to see the great harvest of souls. It's going to escalate more and more and more until the, it is like literally like a net breaking boat sinking harvest of souls that is unlike anything we've ever seen in church history. You know, I, I have an, an apostle friend of mine who passed away a few years back, and he was in a full-blown move of the Spirit where the church grew so fast into thousands and thousands of people that he and uh, all of his associate pastors, all of the elders, they were, and all of the helps ministry, they were just totally wiped out, exhausted because of the ongoing revival that he told his, his staff on, on Saturday. He said, look, Tomorrow is Sunday, and we're all wore out. So I'm going to, on Sunday morning, just teach a simple message, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to just give like a, uh, you know, kind of like I'm going to give where we'll take communion, and then we can go home because we're all exhausted. So he said that the next Sunday, and he told me this, he said, I preached a very simple message, and of course the place was packed out, but I just preached a little simple message. And he said, now we're going to take communion. And he said, let's close our eyes to prepare our hearts. And when he said he opened his eyes, the whole altar is full of people wanting to get saved by the hundreds, by the hundreds. <laughs> so we're going to see the greater glory poured out with great signs and wonders and miracles. God's going to shake America again. God's going to shake other nations. There will be a separation between goat nations and sheep nations. America, I believe, will finish as a sheep nation. Praise God. Well, we love the Lord, and we also love Israel. Praise God. And so we're going to be on the right side in God's eyes, and we're going to get this job done. But my friends, as you pray, you begin to realize that the victory is yours. There's no need for excuses. God can bless you. Look, if I were to take you in a helicopter and drop you off somewhere in the world and say, take over, do your thing. I believe that many of you would know exactly what to do. And then even if you lost everything, let's say you stepped, you, step, you stepped away from everything that you have in America. And God said, let Pastor Stephen drop you off anywhere he wants to. I could take you to any country of the world, even any undeveloped country of the world. I could take you to a remote place. I could drop you off. And you know what? In three years, you'd be prospering. In three years, if you were a business person, you'd have started businesses and you would have started to climb up financially and you would be in a place where you're taking control. Praise God. And that's what happens when you know the word, when you can put the word of God to work in your life, you cannot be defeated. Amen. So you just start working it wherever you're at. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I believe that as we uh, jump into these prayers today, that you will receive that empowerment of the Spirit, the flow with the oil of the Spirit. The light will come on, and you'll know what to do. Anytime there's light, anytime there's illumination, faith will be right there, because faith has to attach itself to the revealed Word of God 
Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here's Paul's prayer, his second prayer for the church in Ephesus. Now, on this prayer, he says he bows his knees. I would encourage you that any time that you pray this prayer to get on your knees. Why? Because that's what Paul did. And there is also something about getting off the couch, getting off the sofa, where you kneel down before the Lord, uh, it does affect you. I like it in the uh, book of Acts when Paul was talking about uh, how he was leaving these people that he'd poured so much into, and it says just before he knelt and he prayed, they all knelt down on the beach. They got on their knees for the final prayer. Woo, praise God. Well, Pastor Stephen, what if somebody saw us do that? They might think we're weird. Well, maybe they think, Hey, that's what I've been looking for all of my life. So be bold, be brave, go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. But there is something about kneeling also that uh, does affect your, your heart, humility in your heart. Now, somebody would say, well, I, my body's not able to do that. My, my knees hurt. Well, put a pillow underneath your knees and try it. Amen. Make way, make way, make way for the word to work. Praise the Lord. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's why there is the reality of what is known in church history and also in some church dogma uh, or doctrine, the, uh, what is called the fellowship of the saints. And it is true. I know many saints all around the world, praise God, amen, and I, I love everybody, amen. I love God's people, and, but it is also true that there's only one church. So we see here the whole family in heaven and earth, and there have been times where by the Holy Spirit, God has granted me through heavenly visions to meet even some of the church in heaven. Woo, praise God, hallelujah, I've met Jesus one time I met, I've met the, of course, the greatest, we, I met the Heavenly Father on another uh, situation, uh, another vision, excuse me, I met Jesus. Uh, another time I met one of the redeemed, uh, excuse me, I met one of the 24 elders, which, you know, when you read all about that and then you're like, wow, this is, this is wild. I, yeah, I met one of the 24 elders. One time I met uh, a, a great saint that I esteemed a whole lot. I met uh, his name is Joseph of Cupertino, St. Joseph of Cupertino. I met him in heaven. Woo, praise God. I can say a lot more about that. Amen. Look, I don't tell all of my stories on TV. Uh, a lot of people see me, uh, you know, maybe having done an interview with Sid Roth and I share some things, but uh, I don't share all of my secrets. I've still got some more. Amen. Which is why you should listen. <laughs> because... Uh, word-based testimonies build your faith also to receive according along the same way. That's how I got into that, that heavenly type thing of having those visions and experiences. I was eating up every testimony. I'm talking about valid testimonies by proven men and women of God. I was eating that stuff up for about three years before it really clicked and began to happen to me. You want to know something really wild? The people that I would read about that lived in other parts of the world that I never knew and never thought I would know, well, I read their supernatural testimonies, and not only did I begin to have supernatural experiences, would you believe I, end up, I ended up meeting every single one of them? And, and getting to know them, I'm, I'm not just talking about shaking their hand and, and, and then saying, oh, I, I met them. No, I'm talking about getting to know them, going into their homes. They opened their hearts to me. They opened their homes to me. And, uh, and this, some of them were in remote parts of the world, and I still met them, still became close friends with them, and still uh, am today. Some were close by. Some lived here, and I, I didn't know it until I got here. <laughs> there was a book. I read, I read in the year 2001 that jolted me of the reality of this deeper walk, and uh, I could hardly function for three weeks after I read it. And so, um, of course, uh, I never knew I was going to end up moving to Moravian Falls, but I moved here, and uh, one day I was uh, 
I was talking to an old man who he's now in heaven. And uh, uh, he lived, he lived into his, ni- well into his nineties. And uh, we were talking and I said, uh, I said, who lives uh, up there? And I pointed to a certain place. He goes, oh, that's where so-and-so lives. And that was the person that wrote the book. He goes, oh, look, they're coming down right now. And they, come, they came down and drove right past me. And the, the, man, the old man stopped them and said, hey, this minister right here, he, uh, he wants to talk to you. And uh, boom, it was so supernatural. But I'm telling you, what you're hungry for, you can have. And natural things can take longer to manifest. And you also have to filter out you know, what could just be like selfishness and what could just be like a Christmas list, you know. You got to kind of filter all of that out. God wants to bless your needs. But when you're kingdom-minded and when you go after spiritual things because you want empowerment to minister to people, you want empowerment to win souls, I tell you what, you you get bumped to the front of the line of God's request. And it does, in the spirit realm, it doesn't matter how crazy, ridiculous, difficult it is. It, it'll happen. It'll, it'll happen. God will do amazing things when you pursue him along those lines. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Every great saint that you ever read about in the Bible, uh, one day you will meet them. Every great saint that you've ever heard about in church history, maybe that lived in a, another era, when you, of course, when we weren't here, you will meet them one day. Praise God. Now, here's the prayer that he, the heavenly father, would grant you according to the rich of his, riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Do you want to go around for the rest of your life like a bicycle tire deflated and flat? You know, they do tell you that whether it's a bicycle tire or your own vehicle tires, they need to have the proper inflation. But some believers, they don't have that power to inflate their spirit. And uh, sometimes you can tell you're talking to somebody where they've been crushed. Life knocked the life out of them. I'll tell you what, you start praying this prayer, uh, you'll have power flow into you. Why? Again, you're asking that he would grant you. Now personalize it. Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you grant me according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with might through your spirit in my inner man. Now, when you pray that every day, what do you think God's going to do? Twiddle his thumbs and say, now, I don't know if I can answer that one. He's the one that inspired Paul to record it so that you can pray it. Of course, he'll answer it, and you'll feel the dynamo, the the dynamic power within you, even. Are you ready for this? even after you finish praying the prayer. Yes, Pastor Stephen, three years from now, we'll feel it. Uh, you'll feel it within three minutes. And I'm not talking like a, like a, like a kind of like a physical feeling. I'm talking in here, you know, you're prayed up. You feel the empowerment. Well, we don't really know what to pray. That's why the prayers are recorded. So we don't have to have all of the mind drift. So we don't have to make it up but so that we can actually pray these and they're still inspired. Even though Paul wrote them 1900 years ago, they're just as fresh as the moment the ink went on to the uh, parchment or whatever it was he was writing on. Now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would grant me according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with might through your spirit in my inner man. Do you see how I'm personalizing? You do the same thing. That Christ... Father, I pray that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, that's agape love, that's the love that puts others first, puts God first, that I may be rooted and grounded in agape love. I pray, Father, that I may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and the depth and the height of the love of Christ. Father, I pray that I know the agape love of Christ, which passes knowledge that I may be filled with all the fullness of you, my God. My friends, when you pray this prayer to know the love of Christ, you have to understand that faith works by love. So this is going to energize your faith because the love of God, the love of God will be unveiled to you. And you'll, um, sometimes 
you'll just call a person. You know you're supposed to call them. Now, if you just kind of like maybe aren't in the spirit and you call them, maybe they're not there. Maybe they don't, they don't pick up. Or, but it, when you're in the spirit, you call and they answer and you just pump life into them. You pump the word and of God and you, you, get, you are able to get across to them that they are loved, that they're not forgotten, they're not, that they're not a number, but they are a person and that you love them and that God loves them. And the reality is there's many others that love them also. Why do you do things like that? Because the love of God, just you just love people. And of course, when you act, you're acting in bold faith. And I tell you what, it makes an impact on people. Woo, praise God. Amen. Amen. Now to him who is able. Now, Heavenly Father, now to you who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think or imagine, according to the power that works in me. What is it that's working in you? What is that power that's working in you? The spirit of faith. To you be glory. O oh God, to you be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And you can pray that prayer every single day. And if you're having so much fun with it, you can pray it two or three times a day. You can pray it in the morning. Maybe slip off to your car at lunchtime. Eat lunch in your car. Pray it then. And then before you go to sleep at night, pray it then. Now, I'm going to share a few others uh, uh, prayers that Paul prayed. And you're, you're, I tell you, you're in the Alpine Heights with this. You're praying from the summit. Mm -mm -mm. Even if you're working at the bottom of a coal mine, if you kneel down on your break and you pray this, you're at the, you're at the top. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. But I want you to find the one that works for you best. Ideally, pray them all. But there might be one that so grabs your heart that it becomes your favorite, and you do find yourself leaning into that prayer more because it, you're somehow connecting uh, with it. And, and so keep an eye out on that as we're covering these today. So that's Ephesians chapter 3. Now, Philippians chapter 1. Come on, let's jump over to uh, Philippians and see how Paul was praying for the Christians in Philippi. Praise God. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And this I pray. Okay, so again, another inspired prayer recorded in the Word of God that you can take and personalize it. And this I pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that my love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Now, already, you could tell this is incredible. A prayer where you're actually praying that your love will abound in knowledge and all discernment. How many people have misguided compassion? How many people give, but they're, they're giving out of maybe a, uh, like because they're being manipulated or whatever the case might be. But you can pray that your love will abound in knowledge and all discernment because people can try to pull on the heartstrings that you have and try to play you like you're a piano or something like that. But when you are walking in agape love and you're walking in the knowledge of God and all discernment, uh, you, you're just going to do the right thing. And if God, God's not moving you to do anything, you're not obligated to do anything. Mm -mm -mm. I've had people pass through this ministry that, uh, uh, would like for me to be a, and maybe I've been a blessing. I've been a blessing to many ministries. This ministry has been a blessing to many ministries. And of course, most of them are excellent. Some of them are maybe smaller and maybe they have their struggles and maybe they're still trying to get some things figured out. And I've had them kind of like not be happy at me because I didn't give another uh, offering like the one I gave previously. Well, maybe I didn't feel to give that same offering again. Maybe the Holy Spirit's not directing me. And you're not going to manipulate me to do it either. And so they don't like that. So they uh, maybe uh, want to like pull out or something like that. I'm like, well, well, that's fine. But of course, ideally, ideally also, I, my prayer for them is they grow to a place where they're not just like in receiving only mode, but they can also grow up because, you know, a man or woman is not, your weight is not in what you're able to receive. Have you ever met people you all, you have to help them all the time. 
but your weight and your blessing and your legacy is in your giving, not in your, in your receiving. Now, of course, God wants you to receive, and he wants you to be a good receiver because God wants to shower you with blessings. But what makes a man or woman is in their giving. Praise God. But that, that, because that's where the maturity is at. Even Paul said, and he's quoting Jesus, because it was said they knew that Jesus made this statement. So Paul said that, according to what Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than it is to what? Than it is to receive. So you want to be in the greater blessing position. Mm -mm -mm. I pray that my love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that I may approve the things that are excellent. Father, I pray that I may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Father, I pray that I be continually filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of you, my God. Now, after you've just prayed and asked God to fill you with the fruits of righteousness, and you're really praying these types of prayers, do you actually think you want to go out and do something sinful? Look, my friends, sin will either keep you from prayer or prayer will keep you from sin. I pray that it will be the latter. I pray that it will be that your prayer life and your strong devotional life will just dry up, dry up what used to be maybe tendencies to lean in a certain direction that you shouldn't be leaning in. Mm -mm. And prayer will. It'll just quench it. Praise God. Now, we're still in a flesh and blood body, and until we go home to be with the Lord, we have to deal with these very, uh, you know, weak bodies. When I say weak, I'm not talking about unhealthy, but I'm just talking about compared to where we're going. When eventually, when we get our glorified bodies and we can fly through space and fly around the, the, the earth realm, and I mean, when we can do some of the things that one day we will do, uh, yes, we will look back and say we were very fragile beings indeed because of the physical bodies or the house that we have to live in during our earthly journey. Praise the Lord. But my friends, when you're praying and asking God to fill you with the fruits of righteousness, he will. He most certainly will. And so the fruits of righteousness, of love and joy and peace, uh, he, th they just begin to flow out of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he will answer this prayer. And look how short it was. Look at that. Four, ver four verses. But maybe, maybe that becomes your signature prayer. The one that you go to and you just grabs your heart and you pray it over and over. And you can because it is inspired by by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, Colossians chapter 1. This is my favorite prayer in the Bible. Do I pray the others? You, you better believe I do. And I pray Ephesians 1, Ephesians chapter 3. I pray those prayers. But this one, and I, by the way, pray the one in Philippians 2. But this one, there's something about it. Um, I love it. I love it like crazy. And I want to share with you a few reasons why. Let's jump into it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. My favorite prayer in the Bible. Also, my favorite book in the Bible. Now, Colossians 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, Paul says, we do not cease to pray for you. Okay, so get ready. Here's the prayer. And ask that you may be filled. So here we go. Here's the prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you fill me with the knowledge of your will. My friends, what's the number one thing that people want that are Christians? They want to know God's will for their life. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if somebody would have taught you this prayer when you were in 10th grade in high school? And that way you would have known what you were going to do when you graduated high school. You would have known if God wanted you to have gone to college, because if you pray for him to reveal his will to you, he will. You would have known all kinds of things. I didn't know because I didn't know how to pray these prayers. And so I uh, went out of uh, high school and had a full scholarship at a, uh, at a really good division two university. And they said, Hey, you're, you, you know, you're running real fast times in track. And not only that, my high school coach graduated from there. So I had a free full scholarship over here. 
but I was directed in a different direction. And I went off in the different direction and went to a different university and plunged myself into debt with my eyes wide open. <laughs> Pastor Stephen, how could you have done something so stupid? Uh, you, you just don't know. You don't know. And so others direct you over here and they say, no, 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 you're going to do this over here. So I went this a different direction and uh, it just kind of like floundered just kind of floundered, you know, but, and, you know, uh, it's interesting, very, very interesting. I, I still ran track at the other college, but I ran into a problem there. That, the college I went to was ranked third in the nation in track. There was, USC was number one, UCLA was number two, guess who was number three? Our track team. So I, I went out of high school with really good times, but I'm walking now into a university where their track team is third in the nation, and so it was layered so deep, there was no more scholarships. <laughs> and the other one was like, hey, you got a full ride if you come over here. Ah, but it's water underneath the bridge. And when you still love God, even if you don't know these things, he'll begin to work in your life. And he did. So while I, while I went in this kind of funny direction, I did meet for the first time in my existence on planet Earth, I met at that university, uh, Another student, he was just like, he was like a year older than me, but he knew how to pray. I had never met, can you believe that growing up in church? I had never met in my life a person that knew how to pray. And we became friends. I got around him. I never forget the first time he invited me to pray with him in the morning. And uh, I got up early in the morning to meet him in prayer. And we went into a, a, a quiet room. There's nobody there. And uh, we began to pray, and I prayed what must it felt like all day long, but I, it was actually like 19 minutes. I had I had never in my life prayed 19 minutes. I thought I had just conquered Mount Everest, <laughs> and uh, but I felt full. And I turned around and looked at him. He's still over in the corner praying, because that was just a warm up for him. But uh, it, it didn't take long. I was up to 40 minutes, then 45 minutes, and I. I I was like, wow, woo, woo, praise the Lord, amen. So that began to grab me. And uh, so if, if you love the Lord, he'll begin the work in your situation, even if you made a wrong turn and you don't even know you made a wrong turn. Even if you're not even, uh, not only not on the highway, maybe you're not even on the street. Maybe you're on a sidewalk. <laughs> oh, praise God. But here's the catch. Wherever you're at right now, I do know that everybody wants to know what God's will for their life is. I also know that God unveils it phase by phase and because it's a faith walk. He's not, not going to tell you everything at once. He'll show you a lot, absolutely, but as to how it's all going to get worked out, you have to walk that out by faith. But I'll tell you one thing. When you know God's will for your life, at least you are moving in the right direction. And he can really get it specific. It's not unusual. When you pray this prayer, you can come out of, you know, uh, high school and so forth, and you know exactly what God wants, whether it's to go in the military, go into university to get a certain type of training, or maybe go into a trade school or start your own business. Because it is true that, um, you know, some people come out of high school and they've already got the gift. Why waste four years going off, let's say, to like a business school when you're supposed to start your own business. That's what happened with my stepson, just brilliant in business, went off to university to business school. And after a year, he's just like, I already know all of this. And he just pulled out, jumped in the business and, uh, you know, very, very successful. But it, it's a knowing, it's a knowing, praise God. And the Lord will answer this prayer for you. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray and I ask that you fill me with the knowledge of your will. If you do that, he will. And I'm not talking where like six, six years later, he begins to show you. No, you, you'll start to pick up on it like, like on a radar. Beep, beep, you know, like that blip, blip. You'll catch it. You'll catch it within your heart. I ask that you fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now that is attached on to that prayer request of the knowing God's will so that when you do know it, you also have wisdom 
to not rush in. Let me give you an example. God could show you that there's ministry in front of you. Before God ever put me in full-time ministry, I knew it for years. Kelly did too. And my wife also, she's called this a prophetess. She gets very accurate words of knowledge when she prays for people. And she also is very, very, if I could say like the word fluent, very fluent in, in prophesying over people. Remember that if you get around her, because if you ask her to stir that anointing up in her, she, she can pull up something beautiful from heaven for you. Praise the Lord. Side note, it's Pastor Kelly's birthday on June 18th. If you would like to be a blessing to her on her birthday, you can go uh, to the ministry website. Look up top. There's a link that says, uh, Bless Pastors Stephen and Kelly. If you click that, and just send her a blessing and put birthday blessing for Pastor Kelly. She'll get that. I know she'll appreciate it. And it would mean a lot that you're praying for her, thinking about her, and even sending a love gift into her life. Praise God. Glory, glory to God. Praise the Lord Jesus today. But my friends, you need to, you need to have wisdom and spiritual understanding so that as God unve unveils his will of something to do, of something to accomplish, of something to be, that you, you have the wisdom to walk it out in a very, very wise way. When David was a young man and he was in the court of King Saul, it said that David behaved himself wisely. And you have to stop and think about that because he, in a private sense, has already been anointed to be the king of Israel. And, but he behaved wisely. You have to know when to reveal things and when to keep it zipped. Woo, praise God. Praise God. And I think the wisdom more often is to know when to not reveal certain things. Praise God. Now, and you're praying this. Father God, fill me with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that I may walk worthy of the Lord. Father, that I may be pleasing him. In other words, pleasing to the Lord Jesus. Worthy of the Lord Jesus that I may be fully pleasing him. Father, I pray that I be continually fruitful in every good work and that I be increasing in the knowledge of you, my God. Mm -mm. Father God, I pray that you strengthen me with all might according to your glorious power for all patience and long-suffering endurance with joy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Glory. I have, a, I have a picture let me see if I can find it. I'll pop it up on the screen now. This is uh, St. Teresa. Of Okay, there's a bunch of different St. Teresas. This is the one, St. Teresa of Avila. And uh, I love this picture because what happened is that her and her nun friends were trying to cross a river, and it's raining, and there's mud everywhere. And the story goes that somehow she slipped and fell off of her horse and landed in the mud, and she's getting rained on. And she said, Lord, she said, why do you put and why do you allow so many obstacles to always be in our path? And the Lord spoke to her while she's sitting in the mud getting rained on, and the Lord said, I do that for all of my friends. And she said, oh, no wonder you have so few friends. <laughs> oh, praise God. But that, that long-suffering patience has to do with dealing with things that can be hard and difficult, but God's allowing it for your extreme development so that you can learn what it is to have really true joy. Because a lot of people, they're only like happy when everything's going good. But when you, when you can praise God and when you can open your mouth and laugh when you fell off your horse and now you've you got mud all over your clothes and getting rained on and you still got to get across the river, when you can laugh in the face of stuff like that, you've got something really special going on with God. And if you will pray these types of prayers, God will build such strength on the inside of you that lions can't take it out of you. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I pray that you strengthen me with all might according to your glorious power for all patience and long-suffering endurance with joy. Father, I give thanks to you because you have qualified me to be a partaker of my inheritance of the saints in the light, 
Father, I thank you that you have delivered me. Watch the language. Listen to the language. Father, I thank you that you have delivered me. Look, God's already done it. We don't need uh, 47 cycles of deliverance. You have to understand what Jesus accomplished for you at Calvary and buy into that with your entire heart. He has already done this work. And when you realize it, every little uh, effort of the enemy to try to like get you under condemnation for past sins that his blood has already paid the price for, paid the penalty of, and they've not only been paid, but they have been forgiven. I tell you what, you find out who you are in the Lord, and you know that the victory is yours, and you know that you're not praying from the bottom, hoping that God will somehow lift you up. You begin to realize, hold, hold, hold on a minute, I'm already on top, because he put me on top. Praise God. So you're not trying to become something as much as it is you're realizing who you already are in him, more than a conqueror. Mm -mm -mm. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have delivered me from the authority of darkness, and you have conveyed me into the kingdom of the Son of your love, in whom I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of my sins. My friends, every time you pray that, it feels so good. It feels so good to be reminded that because of the blood of Jesus, you have complete forgiveness of all of your sins. Woo, praise God. Now, you can certainly see why the enemy wouldn't want you to pray this prayer. So this prayer, which runs from verses 9 through 14, is my favorite prayer in the Bible. I've prayed it literally thousands of times, and I'm going to pray it till Jesus comes back. It brings such comfort into my heart, but it also does infuse God's strength into my life. It will do the same for you. Praise the Lord. One more. Now, there are others. There are others, First and Second Thessalonians, but I'm going to give you one more, and uh, I would call it a closeout blessing player, uh, uh, prayer. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Go to the very last chapter, Hebrews chapter 13. I am so glad that you're here today because I know that you have a hunger for victory. Praise God. You have an appetite for winning. You want to win over temptation. You want to win in your finances. You want to be a soul winner. Hallelujah. Amen. So your prayer life is essential in this uh, recipe of victory. Now, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, Paul the apostle, now with the prayer. Now may the God of peace, now this is how you pray it. Heavenly Father, God of peace, you brought up my Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Heavenly Father, I pray that you make me mature in every good work to do your will. I ask that you work in me what is well-pleasing in his sight, excuse me, in your sight, through Jesus, the anointed one, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So if you're asking God to make you mature and complete, if you're asking God to work uh uh, to make you complete in every good work, I tell you what, he'll do it. He will work into you what pleases him. And we all have different assignments, different gifts, different talents, different personalities. But God will work into you the image, the mature image of his son and people. They'll see you because you are you. You're, you're a child of God but they'll see Christ in you. They'll, they'll see Jesus shining out of you. Amen. And they'll be drawn to you. And you'll realize, of course, that that magnet pull that they feel is Jesus shining through you. Praise the Lord. He will work it in you. But that prayer is there to ask him to do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really see God getting you on a very streamlined, laser-focused path where you know what attracts you, what feeds you, and what builds you. You also know what would be Achilles heel areas, and you avoid them with great diligence. Praise the Lord. I also know that when you have a prayer life like this, that even though the enemy would try to lay snares and traps, 
it's just like it's like a bird watching a, a bird catcher or as the as it says in the book of Proverbs, the fowler, the bird catcher, it's like watching the bird catcher just laying the net out. The bird's like, what do you think? I'm stupid. I can see you doing it. <laughs> and that is really that area that you get into in the spirit walk with God where you, you're sharp in that area. But it does, it does depend on a daily devotional, a strong prayer life. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for your people as they're watching, taking this to heart, listening intently. I pray that their prayer life be invigorated. I pray, Father, that they will embrace the, the prayers that are working for them. Let them try these out. Let, the, let them take these prayers for a test drive. And I thank you, Father, that it's going to be part of their, their weaponry, part of their armory, and they'll get dressed with it. They'll, just like they put their clothes on every day, they're going to put these prayers on, and they'll be wearing your armor that you have for them. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the great wisdom that you are empowering your people with. I thank you, Father God, that you are transferring the wealth of the wicked into their hands, those that are wicked and evil. While we want to see their salvation, uh, some are conscienceless. They have no conscience and they do evil things. But Father, you're going to transfer even the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous, and they will use it for a righteous cause, for the preaching of the gospel and for the expansion of your work. You're going to give them wisdom for this. I thank you that even as they pray, many of them, you will show them what to do, businesses and business trajectory and how to walk it out step by step. Father, we just thank you for kingdom ideas, kingdom wealth. I thank you for kingdom health. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is our healer, but he's not our nutritionist. It's up to us what we stick in our mouths. I pray for knowledge for your people in this area, that they will have health in their bodies and they will have longevity on this earth to fulfill all that you've called them to do. Now, Father, we thank you. We give you all of the praise. We give you all of the praise. I pray, Father, that, that those that are needy and hurting and that are open to the gospel, I pray that you bring them across their paths to witness to them your love and to witness to them salvation in your Son. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The oil of prayer makes your life well-oiled. Praise God. Things will happen so smoothly. Glory to God. Now, if you're watching me today and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you know, what would happen if today was your last day? Now, nobody, of course, thinks it is. Even those that are 100 years old, uh, they think, well, I'll probably live another day. But what if today was your last day and tomorrow you're in you're in eternity. Where would you go? Do you know where you would go? Well, I want you to go to heaven, and the way to heaven is through Jesus, God's Son. He paid the penalty on the cross for your sin, for my sin, and all you have to do is receive him by faith, make him your Lord and your Savior, and he'll come into your heart, and he'll wash all your sin away. I know that you want that, and I know that you need that, and I know that the Holy Spirit is working upon your heart Right now, that's why your, your heart is like, you're, you're like, this is a special moment, and it is. Pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, you died on the cross to pay for my sin. Thank you for doing that. Jesus, I give my life to you. Save me right now. Wash all of my sin away with your precious blood. Jesus, write my name in your book of life. Step into my heart. Lead me and guide me from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. And I thank you that I belong to you now. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Those of you that have prayed that prayer, I have a special blessing for you. Email me at contact at stephenbrooks.org. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now, let us take Holy Communion today. I want you to grab some grape juice. Whoops, that's not the grape juice, that's the tea. Grab some grape juice and some unleavened bread. If you don't have unleavened bread, grab a little cracker. Even a cheese it will do. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the bread and the juice. Through this prayer, we set it apart as being holy. 
And we thank you that this is now the body and the blood of Jesus. When we look at it, it still looks like grape juice and bread, but it is the body and the blood veiled under the form of bread and juice. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he set the example of fervent prayer. We thank you, Father God, for these prayers that Paul has unveiled to us by your Spirit. We thank you for grace to engage with them and to meet you in prayer. Thank you, Father. We now receive the Lord's body and his strength in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's receive together. What happens when you pray every day that God will fill you with his knowledge? Do you think that will affect perhaps the way that you take communion? Look, don't, don't make fun of those in different streams of the Christian faith. Every stream seems to think they have more knowledge than everybody else. But the truth is, it takes the entire body to be the body. One nation of Israel, yet 12 distinct tribes. One body, but where would your body be without the hands and the arm, uh, the legs and the eyes and the hair? Where, where would you be if you didn't have the other body parts? Don't make fun of the Catholics because they believe this is the body and the blood. I do too. You'd be, you might be surprised how many in Pentecost do. A whole bunch of us do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not out to debate that. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But th I'm telling you, uh, there is, there's deeper revelations of the Word than so many have ever journeyed into. Praise God. This is not just bread and crackers. We're not just remembering what Jesus did. This is way more than a meal. And as you pray these prayers, you might be surprised at some of the revelations that Jesus unveils to you. This is the prayer of the Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will, the deep and intimate knowledge of your will. But we also have, Lord, give unto me, I pray, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Wow, it's amazing what begins to open up. The best thing to do on things you're not sure about is don't teach on it or don't talk about it. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, amen. But when you know, these things we proclaim, not theories, things we know. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for health in our bodies. Thank you for wealth in our finances. Thank you that we have sound minds. Thank you that we are soul winners and we have a heart for you. Oh God, we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the Lord's blood. That's the miracle meal. It's the miracle meal. Mm -mm. Somebody's being healed of emotional trauma right now because you just took communion. Somebody is being healed of emotional trauma, something that was done to you. And every time you think about it, 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 it bugs you. It bothers you. It, maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and it, you feel like the devil is greater in this area. You're being healed right now of emotional trauma. You're being healed. Now, you'll still have the memory, but it, uh, you've, got, you've got the anti-venom now, and it's taking any superiority that the devil had in that area, it's stripping it completely, and all it is now as a reminder is that the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. And even if you remember that, which you probably will from time to time, it can't hurt you anymore. It's nothing but burnt ashes. It has no power to hurt you. That's a miracle meal. Praise God. It's not bread and crackers. It's not just looking back and thinking, isn't that nice what Jesus did on Calvary? It is a supernatural meal. Communion is a kingdom mystery. Somebody just got healed. You just receive emotional trauma healing. You're no longer a victim. You're no longer traumatized. It's gone. And you know it is. You can tell something happened. Praise God. Hey, email me. Let me know. Praise God. Rejoice in what God has done and express your testimony. It'll be a blessing to others. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Now, my friends, let's pop up on the screen. 
ways that you can give to support this ministry and this ongoing work. Praise God. You can give online, and you can also mail in your tithes and offerings so that we can continue to spread the gospel around the world. So right now, we need uh, a lot more Christian run gravel. So if you have uh, the ability to sow an extra offering on top of your tithe, help us to complete this. Yes, it's a long driveway. <laughs> but at the same time, we're pouring the gravel really thick. I'm talking like some places like 12 inches thick because uh, the areas that we have laid right where uh, we put it on real thick, I've seen 60,000 pound dump trucks load it with gravel, drive over it, and there's no sinkage. Hallelujah. The last thing I want is, you know, five years from now, we start having pavement problems because we didn't get it thick enough. I want it thicker than what it needs to be. So, Basically, it's like $580 for a full load. I'm talking like a dual axle, huge dump truck to come in with a full load of that granite and limestone dust. It's called Crush and Run and dump that and have my guys with the skid steer spread that out. So uh, if you want to be an extra blessing, we need to do that. It's dry right now and we can spread it right now and they can come in and pour it. So we're ongoing with that. This is all uh, you could call uh, road preparation and things like that. So we need to run it all the way back to the prayer er uh, area. And it was wet, and we, we had to pull back on that for a while, but now it's dry. So let's just get a whole bunch of dump loads back there and get this done. Praise God. So if you want to sow something towards the crush and run gravel, uh, just make a little notation on that on the offering area. Go to stephenbrooks.org, look up at the top, it says give online. Click that. There's an area that says tithes and offerings. Click that. It'll take you to the page that says fund, F-U-N-D. Click that. There's a drop-down menu. Hit the one that says offering and just type in gravel. Okay, I'll know what you're talking about. It's technically called crush and run gravel. And it's used as a sub-base before you ever pave with asphalt. Uh, and so we need to run it all the way back to the prayer altar so um, we need some more. Praise God. So thank you for helping us to keep the dump trucks running, bringing it, keeping the guys working, because we've got to spread a bunch more. Praise God. Because the first thing we're going to build will be the prayer altar structure. And then we will turn our full attention at that point to the new building. And I've got the blueprints finalized. It is going to be beautiful. But there must be a place for people to come and pray that must be built first. Praise God. This ministry is built on prayer, and uh, we're praying, and I want to have a place when you come out to visit, you can pray, hallelujah, just as loud as you want, <laughs> as long as you want. Thank you for your giving. Heavenly Father, bless their seeds, bless their offerings. Let overflow be theirs. Take them into their wealthy place where there is so much overflow. And I thank you, Father, that even as they would, some would even sow in tears, even with sacrificial offerings, I thank you they're going to reap with such outrageous joy. I thank you, Father, let there be heaps and heaps of overflow. Father, we give you praise, and they'll know it's because of your goodness. And we thank you they'll also know it's because it's their harvest from seeds they have sown. Father, bless them. Father, I know I'm talking to a champion a champion audience of givers all over the world that you've connected their hearts to this ministry. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for their glorious harvest that the angels are bringing in right now, even this month and throughout June and July and August. I thank you, Father, for just harvest, harvest, harvest. We give you praise. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My friends, thank you for watching. Go and, uh, again, test drive these prayers. Find the ones that work for you or drive all of them. Hallelujah every day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back again real soon. Bye-bye.